Welcome back to my bench. Today we have a Yesu FT101, one of the original ones. No letters, just plain 101. Um, and uh, this one was brought in by a viewer. Or, and uh, he wanted me to get it fixed up for him. And I said, sure, love to. Well, this one involved changing out the tubes because uh, the tubes that were on it were were seriously blown, <laughs> uh, like sucked inside out, uh, and uh, some other stuff had been done to it that I found later on. Uh, and when you change the tubes, that involves uh, changing a couple of caps because you can't get the original um, Japanese-made tubes that went with this thing anymore. You have to put American tubes in. He went out and bought a set of matched pair as close as he could, and uh, it, uh, and it, they, they're not cheap. You, you gotta, <laughs> if you're gonna get them, get, get good ones, don't get cheap ones. Um, and I said, okay, so the, the stuff that you have to change is uh, pretty, you know, pretty simple. It's, it's online everywhere. You can see it. It's not a problem. The first thing you have to do is you have to check down here underneath let's see if I can get this to come in here for you um, without losing focus there we go up here inside the the cage there is oof let's turn the power off here up here there are a couple of resistors that you gotta check out one of them is right there it goes um, over to that pin these, these are the, this drive transistor here or resistor and the other one that uh, is interesting enough is this one down here. Uh, we'll look at that on the schematic here in a minute. But this one was burnt. This one was 100 ohms. So is this one, or it's, yeah, it was supposed to be 100 ohms. And uh, it was nothing. It was like open, 10K or something like that. I forget. I'll look it up on the schematic. But that needed to be replaced. This one was replaced. And also down in here, there is a capacitor that has to be changed. And if we uh, take this off, I'll show you. Oh, crud. Okay. Down in here, there is a coupling capacitor that's right... I don't know if you can see this. We'll try it. It's right there. So there's a coupling capacitor right there that has to be changed. We'll look those up in the schematic too. Uh, and check everything else around there. Make sure nothing's burnt up or otherwise blown away. Um, from misuse, abuse, or somebody else getting into it that literally didn't know what they were doing. Because uh, that happens a lot with these. Let's put this back on here. And get this out of here, where it fell down inside. So, anyway, so I replaced those, and I replaced, if we could see here, ugh. okay, let's take this back out. This is not quick, this uh, remote control. I'm trying something different on this video. Also, you have to change this capacitor right, right there, that one. Now, you do this because if you don't, you can't neutralize these new tubes, these American tubes. Let's see if I can get this down in here a little bit better and show you this capacitor. Uh, <clears throat> can't control it when you're not. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, it's right there. That cap. That goes down to the neutralization cap. Capacitor, variable neutralization capacitor, which is right. This thing is heavy. It's, it doesn't have an external power supply. It's got an entrance, which is right down. Let's see. Come on. Wow. Oof. Put a little more light on here. Maybe you can see it. It's right down there. That's the neutralization cap. So you got to change that capacitor, one on the bottom, a resistor, at least one resistor. And uh, I did that, and I went through uh, the neutralization, and it worked just fine. The only problem was, at that point was, oops, back out, Hold on, that um, the meter didn't work anymore. And I said, well, okay, that's a little unusual. Um, so I started looking around, tracing things out, and eventually I found that someone, for absolutely no reason whatsoever that I can picture out, yeah, you like the fuse? Don't do this at home, boys and girls. I don't have the right size fuse for this. This is, this is a bad... Don't do that. Okay, so what I found was the meter wouldn't work in power mode. It would work okay in um, uh, in the uh, you know the, the regular modes that you have it in here with the ALC and uh, the IC mode, the current mode. But it wouldn't work in power at all. Now what had happened? Bring it back in here again, and I'll show you. Um, right here, this little board, this is hard to do backwards, okay. There's a little board right here. And this little board basically takes a tap off of the output coil that right here where it goes right straight to the uh, output takes a tap off of it through a capacitor into um, a detector circuit that gives you a voltage to drive the meter well someone had taken a resistor and gone from right there to right there basically shorting it out so that it wouldn't do anything and if you look real close, right here, can you see that? Right there, right there, is a little capacitor that is connected directly to this output to this choke coil, which is that lead right there. It's just basically wrapped around it and soldered on. That had been cut also. Why? I have absolutely no idea. So, um, let's take this back out. So, when I got that fixed, suddenly the meter started to work, which was a good thing. And I said, well, cool, I think I got this thing fixed and it's going to work. I did, uh, did a cold um, uh, uh, equalization, neutralization on it. I'll leave a link uh, below. If you want to learn how to do that from uh, the radio shop, he's, he explains it very well and it does a great job of it. Ooh. Anyway, so I'm going to put this back on the bottom here. And I'm doing this because you can't run this thing efficient, effectively without having the bottom on. It, it just won't work. You'll get all kinds of spurs or the top also. So, we'll just put that on right there. If you are working inside of these, remember, high voltage, high voltage. If you do this, you're doing so at your own risk. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Because that right there can kill you. And uh, it would not be pleasant either. So, we're going to put this back on. 
Alright, so I'll put those back on there later when I get done. Alright, so now we still have one other problem. That problem, let's see, let's take this off. And we'll put the, this on. And we'll put the plug back in it. This is, yeah, taking this out, this plug out is part of the cold neutralization. It turns off the filaments on the heaters, or the heaters on the filaments on the output tubes, so you don't, um, you don't put a bunch of power into whatever you're trying to measure, or measure it with, and it works great. It's a wonderful method to do it with. Anyhow, so... Let's get this sitting over here, make sure I'm not sitting on anything, turn my power back on, and power on, and filaments on. Alright, so now everybody is charged up. Can we see this over here? Yeah, we can. Let's see if we can get a better, better picture of it here. I don't know if I like this method. Of doing this, I've, I've just decided I needed another camera, and uh, this is the best way I could come up with it. Anyhow, if you watch over here on the scope, we are on power monitor. We'll take our power down to low, put this on tune, get our tune sort of around where it needs to be. Hit the push to talk. Uh, let's take it over to the uh, analyzer. And as you can see, we've got a little, uh, little bump there in the analyzer where we're putting out some power. Not much. Um, it's saying about a watt at this point. Um, let's see. There. Okay. Uh, so we've got that. We've got the power. And now... Let's try this. Let's see if we get any uh, audio on it. In AM, we should see it. You know, the audio signal on the AM. Hello. And we got nothing. I know you can't see it here, but I've also got audio level. And there's nothing there. Maybe 1% hum, I guess. But I got nothing at all here. Well, this drove me nuts for a while. Let's see. Also, when I put it on Vox, it just keys it. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. That's Mox, M-O-X. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, there's my key. It's where it's supposed to be, except no audio at all. Alright, and my this is, yeah, that's crank. So, let's go back. Back up, come on. All right. Now, this did kind of throw me for a loop for a while. And I started looking around on it. And this card right over here is the audio card. It is the mic preamp, microphone amplifier, uh, Vox, Vox control, and uh, side tone generator for CW. And it also has the delay for the Vox and all the other stuff on it. So this card is hmm. This card is a, uh, where's the number? It is a, see if we can see this. I don't know if you can. It's kind of ugly at that point. PB1081B. Can you see that at all? Maybe, I hope. Anyway, it's a PB1081B. Uh, it can be, you can see it because it's got these two, Transistors on here. This section over here is pretty much the same as all of them. It has these two transistors, little driving choke uh, coil, 
Uh, I went through it and checked the capacitors. They're good. This little trailer, or IC is good. Uh, IC is a, a 740. What is this thing? Uh, I can't see it. It's it's eaten up right now. There's a spot in the middle of it, and I can't get rid of it. 724, 7, 7342, something like that. Anyway, and uh, I literally went through this board piece by piece. There's nothing wrong with this board. I checked everything on it. And then I read the manual carefully. And I found out <laughs> this the serial number on this machine is above 25,000 or 24,001 or whatever it is. You cannot use a PB1081B. You have to use this one. They look alike. This section of it looks much, much like this one does. Let's hold them up. As you can see, they look a lot alike. Uh, the only difference that you can see over here right off the bat is this thing has an STK401 power amplifier chip. This has got a couple of transistors and the associated stuff that it needs. This is a PB1189. You can't see it. It's, it's on there somewhere. PB1189. And this is what you have to have to work in a unit over Serial number 24,000. It doesn't really say that. And finding any information on this, this 1081B, is virtually impossible. I can find pictures of it, but almost no information on it at all. This thing is what comes in the manual, and that's what it is. So I said, fine, this is good. Let's stick this in here and uh, see how it works. I had to order this from England, which I did. One sheet, they're, you know, 68 bucks or something like that. With the guy's blessing, I ordered it. And it's fun getting these boards in here. And I tried it out. There we go. I tried it out. Let's turn it on. The audio still works. The audio worked on this board. The, the audio output works fine. The audio still works on here. We still got... Let's go back over to here. Okay. And bring it in. Earth. Okay, there we go. Still got our, uh, what do you call it, uh, <laughs> our lump uh, for frequency. And now, you see, we have audio. Amazing. We have audio. We're, uh, i got to turn this down a little bit or it's going to over, overdo it. And if I talk into it, there's 100%. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit too much. Hello. Hello. There's about seventy mm, percent. Perfect. Perfect. We're putting out one point eight watts. It really a lot happier if if you talk it up. Anyway, if you look at it, one, two, three, four. Okay. Perfect. Board worked fine. Well, not exactly. I said, that's good, let's check everything else. And so I put it on Vox and the keys. Interesting. And it's doing, okay. I said, okay, put it on Vox, it keys. And if I turn the Vox gain down all the way, still keys. If I turn the relay control all the way down, still keys.
So we still got a problem. We got to figure out what that is. Well, I don't know. See if I can get the schematic up here. Alright. Here, on the schematic, we've got... This is the... Where is my mouse? I can't see my mouse. Oh, there it is. Oh, we'll do that. Here is the... Turn me down. Here is the uh, preamplifier for the microphone. Microphone comes in here, goes up through a choke coil, a coil of some sort, down through a 4.7K resistor, another 0.01, into the gate of this FET, and uh, that FET turns on, and, well, because here's the power. Anyway, the FET amplifies it, and then it comes, let's see, comes out through this trend, this capacitor right there, uh, down through here, down to pin 4, and on the board, and then out to the mic gain control. Well, we know the mic gain control works, and we know the amplifier works. Hmm. There's another amplifier here. So I think what we got to hear, right here is your Vox gain. Oh. And the little IC. Boy, I hope that IC isn't bad. Um, it comes out the IC, goes down to, well that's the anti-trip, comes out pin 8, goes through a couple of, or through a diode, a little capacitor 0.047, and then into the gate of this right here, um, FET, and that FET drives this other transistor, I hate it when they cut them in half like this, okay, where's that, that's, okay, that FET drives this transistor right here, and then that transistor output goes down here, and then back up again, Let's see, that's pins 15, 16, and 7. So back up again, 15, 16. Okay, so it's right here, this line, and it comes out pin 13. Alright, so what it does, if we look at it here, all that Vox does is when it's in Vox mode, it takes it to ground because Mox takes it to ground, PTT takes it to ground, so the Vox takes it to ground too. So, what's happening is that FET turns on because of the output of that diode, that D4, uh, turns on this NPN, this NPN re uh, emitter is grounded, so it'll ground that pin 13. Alright, so that's what it does. Well. Let's see what's happening down here. Turn our power down. And, wow. This thing is heavy. Alright. I'm going to turn this off. While I turn it over. Uh, everything's under there. Okay. Okay, so... Let's get this back down here so you can see what I'm doing. And pull this back out. Widen it back out. Like I said, I don't know if I'm sold on this method yet, but we'll do this video this way. Okay, we'll take this off. Alright. Speaker. We can just let you kind of dangle over there. And get our meter. Mm, find the ground. Alright, so turn it back on. I can turn off the heaters for now. Alright, so what do we say? Pin 13? Yes, pin 13 should be going to ground uh, well I shouldn't do anything
anything until there's audio. Okay. But when we do have audio, it should go to ground. So let's see. This is 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. There's 13. And we got like... Uh, get on something that I know as power here. There are my 13 volts. Okay. Uh, pin 13 is right there. So about 7.9 millivolts. That's nothing. Alright, so if we put it on Vox, we got 4 4.5 volts? Approximately 4.5 volts. Uh, that ain't right. If anything, it sh um, should be going to ground. Or opening, it should be doing nothing, actually. If we take the Vox and we talk, 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 nothing. It doesn't change. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's look at the schematic again. Okay, if we go over here, let's see, where is that? So, pin 13. Split schematics, hate them. Okay, so this is on F7. This is the, the Vox switch comes across, it's the middle one underneath, way underneath 16. So there's 16, way underneath 16, there's that, it comes over here, down to right here. This is the relay, RL1, which is the relay for the transmit. Um, okay. We, I, we got voltage there, so we've got, where does that come from? Um, the other side of here goes, oh my, okay, so here's our 13 volts, 13.5 volts going into that main card, that card we were looking at, comes across here, comes down here, and goes right to that side of that relay, to one side of the relay. The other side of the relay, at this point, has nothing on it on pin 13. Normally it has nothing on it. When I go to Vox, it suddenly has... Oh, what am I doing? Well, I lost my gun. That's why. Okay. Let's see. Okay. It has nothing on it, as we can see. 8 millivolts. And when I go to Vox, it has 4.5 volts, and it's wavering around a bit. Um, how can that happen? Well, let's go back up here, take a look at this. Okay, so, we're driving it with this, right, this diode right there. Nothing else connected to it. It goes back... Oh, to the delay. Okay, so there's a delay circuit here going into that chip. Um, so it goes into the gate through a 3.3 meg resistor. So, Alright, and one side of it goes to ground. And the other side goes to this transistor right there. Uh, Alright, so what have we got? In order for voltage to show up on pin 13, which comes off of this transistor, it has to be halfway on, or something, because it goes right here, right, this transistor is the one we're looking at. One side is grounded, the other side comes down to here, and straight over to 13, and something's leaking. I can't, there's no way I can get a voltage here. 
Okay, well, tell you what, let's let's go for the simplest thing first. I'm telling you, this thing is heavy. All right. Um, let us pull this board. It's got to be on this board. It just has to be. Um, okay, well, let's see. That is... Why do they have to split this right where I need it? That is Q5. It's an MK10. Whatever that is. Okay. Let's see if we can test this thing. Put on the curve tracer. See what we got. Alright, see if I can get a, get a picture of the curve tracer for you here. Is going to be in the way. All right. Where is that? Q. Q. Six. Q. Five. Okay. So it's right. Right. Right there. All right. So it's marked on the bottom of the board. That's nice. Q tracer. There's short. <laughs> I'm doing that on purpose. There's open. Okay. Um, okay, let's go from here to here. Okay, from here to here. It's okay, from here to here. Here to here. Um, that ain't right. From, that's not right. Well, They, there shouldn't be any connection between the day drain and the or the yeah drain, gate and drain. Hmm. All right. Let's. Okay. Let's take this out here. Looks like this board's been worked on once or twice. Uh, it is kind of a known fact that these guys used to go out a lot. This, at least, this one is a B version that has the heat sink on it. That's nice. The old ones didn't, and they would burn up kind of rapidly. Hope I'm taking out the right thing here. It looked like it. Okay. Alright, I'm using the solder wick because my solder sucker needs a new part. Nothing important, just the little spreader that goes in the back. Alright, there is my MK10. That is correct. All right, MK10. I wonder what the pinout is on it. I wonder if they give it to me. Probably not in these older, this old a manual. No, doesn't look like it. But the board is marked. And let's see. This thing went this way. Whoops. Need gate glasses. All right. So, board is marked, gate, okay, one end of that goes right directly to the relay pot. Okay, so the drain, oh, 
There it is, it's in the, in the front too? No. Okay, so it goes this way. So, this is drain gate source. Okay. Let's look at it. Um, well, all right. So, we'll go from drain to gate. All right. So we gotta get back over here on the on this guy again. All right. So gain rate. That's good. Uh, gate source. That's okay. Okay. Why do I have? All right. Let's check it with the checker. FETs can fool you, especially older ones. Okay, it's in there. Turn her on. See what it says. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Can you uh, can you guys read this? It says there's two dials back to back and a resistor between pins one and three. So that would be. A resistor between drain and source. Wow. Okay. Alright, well, um, that is definitely bad. I'm going to have to have to find one. Or something like it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I found one. Right here. It's, uh, I didn't find it. I stole it off this other board. That doesn't work. And checked it out. Just to show you. And testing. Alright, there we go. We have a FET. Cool. Alright, so now... Let's put this back in here. Mm, you know what? I'm going to test just for fun. I'm going to test this little transistor that's right next to it here. Which goes from here to here. Here to here. That's good. And that's good. And that's good. Okay, so that transistor shows exactly what it's supposed to show even though it is in circuit, so I can say that that's good. And that's just a regular transistor, so it's easy to check. Alright, let's put you in there. And sorry you down. So it was leaking. And half turning on that other transistor. Not all the way to ground. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Let us do a little squirt. So the next person that comes along says, Hey, you know, there's been work done. I wonder if there's any good in it. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Sorry. Alright, well, back out. And back up a little bit. Okay. Back. These things, this is fun to get in here, I'll tell you. It's tight. Okay, 
That's in. Get the solder back out of the way. Put things away so you don't get in your way and short stuff out. Put this over there. Alright, and turn her on. Power's on. I don't know, can you see this thing over here? I'd probably pull it out in post. Alright. Make sure we still got everything. Okay. Mm Let everybody warm up. Okay, why am I not... Hello? Okay, that's better. Hello, okay. Do I have audio? Yeah, oh, yeah, my goodness, I've got audio. Hello, one, two. Yeah, lots of audio, if you can see that. Now, let's see what happens if I turn on the Vox. Haha! -ha, it didn't key. Alright, so let's see if I remember correctly. These guys, you put it on Vox. You turn this. Just until it keys. Keyed. Back it off and just a little bit more. All right. Hello. Now we turn the box gain up. Hello. Ah, there we go. We're talking and putting out about five watts. Okay, and anti trip. Turn it up a little bit more. All right. And this is my delay. Hello. Hello? Hello. 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 There we go. You got to play with that, um, with a relay a little bit to get it so it's it will work every time. Sometimes it'll stick on you. Okay, so now I got talk hello. Okay, my delay is not long enough. One. One. Hello. Hello. Hello, one, two. Well, that's interesting. Hello, one, two. Yeah. My delay still isn't working right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Well, the box works, but the delay doesn't. Hello. No, the delay is almost instantaneous. Now that feels funny, that delay part. Hello. 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 Well, it's de it is delaying because on this end, it's almost instantaneous. And on this end, I can talk for a little bit, and then it goes down. Hello. Like I said, this is not the right microphone for this thing at all. That's got to be played with when you got the right mic for it, or the one you want. And anti-trip. Hello. 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 One, two, one, two. Yep, anti-trip is working. If I turn it all the way down, it's hard to get it to come on. Okay, well, there we go. Ah. So, what do we have? New, new tubes and the capacitors and resistors it takes to fix those. Uh, turn you off here. Let's put this back on real quick, like. 
just so I can set it down. There we go. At least I can set it down now. Okay. So, what we had here was... Okay, I don't know how much of that I missed because the camera came unplugged, but we'll work with it. I got this little guy up here that's... I'll throw some stuff in. Uh, so what did we have? What did we find on this thing? Well, uh, first thing we changed the changed the tubes and put in the new equalization uh, equal, yeah cap capacitor up here, replaced the 100 ohms on the bottom and the other 100 ohms. And if we look at the schematic, here is let's see where is it? Here's your neutralization capa capacitor, right there. And your hunt well, and this is the hundred picofarad that you change right there. Uh, it's one kilo hundred picofarad one kilowatt cap. Uh, and then you've got a couple of hundred ohms. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just not doing well. Uh, that you change. Um, where is that? Is a hundred ohms or one k? Here it is. I'm sorry, it's 1K, not 100 ohms. So it's right here. You change that one because that one is the um, feed, it's a, a grid voltage. And they, when the tubes go bad, it takes this out. That's all there is to it. When these things go out, this goes out. And that's just the way it works. And in this one, this one was bad too, right there. Uh, that is R8, and it is a 10K, and it was reading about 2.2 megs, I believe, or something like that. In other words, it was basically open. Uh, so we changed those, did the neutralization, everything is fine. Uh, then we came back and worked with the, uh, the card. Um, with this uh, PB1189 right here, where did my mouse go? Right there, which isn't or wasn't a PB1189, it was a 1081, PB1081, which will not work in here. And the reason that it won't work in here is because a couple of the pins down here in this area, 10, 12, and 13. Some of these are not connected correctly. One of those is 12. Pin 12, on this guy, pin 12 is used for something. Part of, part of the audio, as a matter of fact, comes out of there. And on the 1189, it is not used. It is indeed actually grounded. So that one of the reasons why you cannot use this card. The output this section of the 1080 er, of this uh, 1081p will work works fine but it doesn't it it doesn't have anything to do with this pin 12 so that's why you can't use those you have to have an 1189 so check your serial numbers all right um, and I said, okay well that didn't work so I ordered and got a new one of those uh, 1189s and it worked except over here the this uh, FET was shorted drain source or yeah I think drain source uh, semi shorted to uh, 60 16k yeah something like that uh, and half only half turned on this transistor so we were getting down here at pin 13 we were getting 5 volts uh, approximately which came out down here at this point when it was in Vox and came over to here right there and down to here right there onto that coil that has one side of that coil right there has 13 volts the other side of the coil had 5 volts when it was turned on that was enough to make the coil turn on 
<laughs> and uh, it, it, that, that's the way it works. It's not supposed to have anything there, it's just supposed to go to ground. So, it looks like we got it fixed. I'm going to do a quick alignment on the thing, make sure that it's set up. It, it does sound pretty good. I mean, let's see, uh, let's see if the turn on the receiver. Oh my God, I'm on 14, 20 minutes, 20 hertz. Okay. Okay, turn me down a little bit. .16 yeah it doesn't need much of a tune up it just needs needs an alignment to get the to get the, the upper and lower sideband correct tracking each other so anyway there it is hope you enjoyed it sorry it took so long but uh, that was interesting uh, one step after the other little steps and get things done Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know if you like this new video thing. I'm not sure I do, but we'll uh, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the little uh, the little bell if you want to know when I'm doing more of them.